What is up people, welcome back to Blue Chip Prospect for another scouting report. Today we will be taking a look at Mr. Tiege Iginla. What a pleasure it was to go back and watch a ton of his game first because he's fun to watch but also because his ascension was a bit unexpected. I don't think there's many people out there who expected him to be this good and push for a top 10 spot by the end of the season but he's been that good and he definitely deserves the attention. Anyway without further ado let's get this thing started right away. So Tij is a left shot left winger. I'm not sure why some people are classifying him as a center but I haven't seen him play center once on the season and he has like a hundred face off on the season so there's that. He plays most of the time with Hiroki Gochik on the right wing and Michael Chichek at center but I don't know I was just pointing it out. Tij isn't the biggest dude out there he's six foot 186 pounds and he is very young being born on August 1st 2006. When it comes to ranking he's pretty much well established in the first half of the draft with some people ranking him as high as 10th overall by like uh, Bukala on Sportsnet but there's also a few outliers out there like FC Hockey who has him at 23 and others like Prospect Hockey who has him at 31st. Jeez, <laughs> did not expect that one. When I opened Elite Prospect to check the ranking, I was a little bit taken by surprise with this one. Not that they are necessarily wrong, this whole thing is a crapshoot anyway, but how you find 30 players who you project to be better than Tij in this draft is certainly a valid question in my opinion. Anyways, I expect to see more and more ranking place him closer and closer to the top 10 as it gets updated and especially if he keeps doing what he's doing in the playoffs. In terms of stats, he's been doing really really well. He has 83 points, 47 goals in 62 games. Not too shabby. That's good for 5th in the WHL with 1.34 point per game. That's how stacked the WHL is. And he's also 2nd in goals behind only Katten and followed very closely by Parasak. This type of production puts him in the same tier as players like like Braden Shen and Braden Point, Sven Barchisi, uh, Matthew Barzal, Matthew Savoy, and many others. So overall, some very good company. Outside of that, he's also a volume shooter with 307 shot on goal, putting him fifth in the whole WHL, all ages included, and only 11 of his 47 goals came from the power play. I would like to bring your attention to how crazy Zach Funk's numbers are. He's been lights out with the Cougar but 31 goals on the power play. <laughs> That's impressive. I think that basically most of his tools project as average to above average. He works adequately and it's not going to be something that slows him down but it's not like physicality and competitiveness was the name of his game. There's two attributes that I see as better than the rest and those are the stick and link and the shot. I think the shot is high end and the stick and link could probably also get there but not as it is right now even though there's tons of flash in his hands outside of that the skating is good but won't be a major strength in the nhl and iq is also really good i, I also debated giving the hockey sense a 7.5 but decided to keep it as it is i bumped his passing to 6.5 because of the ridiculous amount of small plays and passes he makes in open ice and off the board before we turn on the clips, please take the time to like and subscribe if you like what I do and especially if you come back for it because you just love my content so much. <laughs> it really helps me grow the channel and reach more people who could be interested in this type of content so please like and subscribe. Also if you're interested I'm basically taking my video content and make it into articles on my brand new website. I also try to stay as close as possible to what I said in these videos so if you want to come back to some info about a player you can just go go to the website click the player find a section you were looking for since it's separated by attributes just like the vids and get the info you wanted just like that it's like magic <laughs> the website is thebluechipprospect.com if you want to go take a look just go all right let's roll the clips like I said previously, I project his skating to be an above average tool when he makes it to the NHL. He has good speed and acceleration but this is, this is not why I gave it an above average grade, neither is the agility. I think all those will match the grade eventually but right now I gave him an above average grade because of the way he uses his skating and his timing. I like that even though he isn't the fastest or the smoothest skater out there, he still pushes the pace all night. It wouldn't be fair to call his skating average because he only has good speed and acceleration because he can create so much with just his skating, he creates way more than an average skater. He's very good at using changes in speed in transition or when entering the offensive zone to attract players on himself 
off or get past them. Along the board, he's really, really good at timing his breaks and cutbacks to create a maximum amount of space. Even when he doesn't have the explosion to create separation from his cover, he will most likely find a way with his skating to get space to make a play. Sometimes it's really not what the tool itself looks like and more how it is used that changes everything. It's not like he's a bad skater to begin with, he wins races for the puck, he hustles to be first on it, he pushes the pace attacking the defender directly pushing them back or getting by them just to cut back at the last second for a quick play. Overall, he's just an effective skater using his brain to maximum to maximum to maximize its effect. When it comes to to hockey sense, I think this tool is the tool that binds everything together for him. Like, I don't think he defends at a high level, but he reads the ice and find ways to put his stick in passing lanes and breaking up plays. I don't think he's a fantastic playmaker, but he reads the ice and find ways to create pockets where he can send a short 5 or 10 foot pass. Like I just said previously, I don't think he's a high-end skater, but he can create space for himself like some high-end skater by timing his cutbacks. You know, he's just really good at using his brain. To do stuff <laughs> it just goes on and on he's not the best at anything but somehow he finds a way the, this should probably be the title of this video tijigin just finds a way <laughs> i also think he's, he's just as smart with and without the puck now i'm not talking about defensively that's not really a strength of his right now but i'm talking about moving and placing himself on the ice without it he anticipates the plays because of how good he is at reading the game and move into areas to receive the pucks of pressure he doesn't just sit still or overcrowd the teammates to get the puck he moves around and times his jump for a lack of better word his awareness on the ice seems to be really high also like he always know where his teammates are in relation to the coverage or where the passing lanes are even when he's not looking and just like he anticipates gaps in coverage he anticipates opening at the net for a redirection or backdoor tap-ins overall i think he's just really good at reading the eyes and making plays accordingly adapting his rushes or his drives to give him to give himself some time or for his teammate to get open for the first time this season i have the clips to support my claims <laughs> if i i can say that tisha ginla is an above average to high end handler and i have the clips to support it a difference between him and many others is that he uses it every shift to get a shot off or to create some space for him to pass the puck out or get to the middle or roll off the pressure on the board even if he loses the puck more often than i would like or even if he attacks defender thinking he can do it all by himself with his handling too often he just needs more experience and more experimentation to understand what he can get away with obviously it's really encouraging to see him use his stick handling to move sticks out of the way for passes or to bait players and attract them on himself or to just toe drag a shot around a defender in traffic but the most impressive for me is how he finds time to make players plays from the board using his handling. He combines both his handling and skating to create space and time for himself along the board, giving time to his teammate to come and support or get into spots for shots. He's really hard to get the puck away from, even when double teamed he has quick enough hands to make them miss and create small plays. Compared to some others, he has the necessary skills but the puck doesn't stick on his stick like Katten or Demidov for example, and he doesn't have the same ability to corral the puck at full speed like Iserman also. So for that reason and other reasons, I don't have him as IN but he has the quickness and handling to get there if he keeps working at it and if he sometimes makes better decision with the puck on his stick in traffic. But other than that, there's not much to debate here, really good ability to handle the puck especially in tight spots where it's the most needed. In terms of compete, he doesn't have it the way his father had it. I'm not saying he's not a competitor but it's not a consistent element of his game, at least not the the physical part of it he doesn't he does work hard to get into position and deep in the zone to retrieve pucks but he's not a physical prison on the ice he doesn't necessarily have the physique for it either as an average six foot guy but i would like to see him engage more physically especially in battles for the puck along the board for some unknown reasons he seems to always be behind the battle instead of engaging and using his body and his strength to win battles he places himself in close proximity and tries to gain the puck using his stick and stick lifting guys i'm sure you all see how fierce battles for the puck are in the NHL along the board and in the corners, how much weight those players put on their stick and their skate to keep the puck locked in waiting for support, not gonna win battles in the NHL by doing that, at least not consistently. I was a little bit caught by surprise by it, for some reason with the name he has I expected a fierce competitor through and through, 
but he seems just average to me. He does he does play in the middle of the ice though. He isn't a perimeter player. He does drive to the net when he sees an opening, whether it's from the inside for a tap in or out wide beating defenders. He's also not afraid to go in high danger areas, but defensively he doesn't apply the same work ethic and sometimes even cheat for offense, or at least he circles back to his blue line or the neutral zone quite prematurely sometimes. When it comes to passing, his passing game is quite simple, but it's still very, very good. I don't think he's a player with the skills and the brain to break down defensive systems and find shooters with seam passes across the ice, even though I've seen him quite a few times make difficult plays and send the puck through traffic, but it isn't a consistent part of his game overall. He is more like a very good short passes passer. <laughs> he works really hard to attract double coverage and send puck into the open gap or to an open teammate or he rushes down the, the the wing and with a quick cut to the middle he sends the pass to a player in the slot a lot of his plays also comes from the board or from behind the net on retrievals where he uses his skating and handling again to buy himself some time to make plays from there i don't necessarily see a passing game is passing game as a high-end element but once again he really knows how to use his tools to maximize them he combines all of his tools to make things happen in the offensive zone and he makes it work night after night not the most skillful passer out there but very smart passer who plays most of the time within a skill set little give and goes five or ten foot passes from the middle or to the middle in open areas overall just a very good very good passer with very good vision and doesn't force passes he will keep the puck or if nothing is open and wait for the right play instead of just making any play his shot is his main selling point and it's really really good and i would say the same even if he had only like 25 or 30 goals in the season his release is textbook it's compact and it's fast on the move or at a standstill it's just really good the shot itself has some very serious velocity on it and it's also very accurate he can pick corners from distance and has the power behind his wrister to beat goalies from distance also when he has the space he can use his whole body to rip the puck with force and when the space is tight and the time is restricted he can curl the shot around players with ease he's really good at selling a pass then shooting or vice versa selling the shot for a pass he doesn't need a lot of space and can really disguise his release making a shot even more lethal he also has a strong one-timer but i don't think it's as good as a snapshot and, and wrister like I said earlier in the video, he's a volume shooter and with a shot like that, the puck tends to go in the net quite often. So <laughs> that's pretty easy to project to the NHL. There's also the fact that he likes to shoot from the middle lane of the ice, always cutting towards the middle or at least curling the puck towards the interior. He's not much of an outside short side type of shooter. I'm sure he has the shot to do it, but it's... It, He's just a middle lane shooter. Another reason why it's easy to project it to the NHL. He's also really good at getting into position for tap-ins and redirection. And not only is good at getting into position, he's extremely accurate with his redirection. It's hard to know if it's always intentional, but so many of his redirection are perfectly placed. To me, if it happens again and again, it must be a skill and not just chance, you know? But all this to say that he's crazy accurate with his at redirecting pucks on net. In the end, it's never a sure thing if a player's tool will translate, but this is as easy as it gets to project. From the shot itself to the release, from where he shoots from to the different ways he can do it, I'd be surprised if he isn't scoring above 20 consistently in the NHL if he hits anything close to his potential. As it stands right now, he definitely has top 6 potential. I think there's a fairly high chance for this guy to play on a second line in the NHL. He's the type of prospect with fairly high floor and a good ceiling also. Not too much risk, not too much risk in this pick, but unless something changes in the trajectory, he project more as a top 6 player than a first line borderline star player. He makes me think of Carter Verhage in Florida, a guy that can make plays but leans shooter more than playmaker, has tremendous shot and the sense to anticipate the plays and get into position, or it's hard to find his way to the middle to score and can also use his hands to open all kinds of opportunities. It seems about right to me. Overall, there's no way he isn't picked in the top 15, maybe even top 10. I was listening to the podcast I was talking about last week, the podcast La Relève, and they said he could be a top 10, maybe even top 5. 
I think top five is probably pushing it a little bit, in my opinion, with players like Celebrini, Dekinson, Lev Shunov, Demidov, Katten, Lindstrom, Helenia, Selayev. <laughs> it's going to be very hard for him to push himself that high in the draft, but I can certainly see teams pick him before other highly ranked players like Bouillon or Perek or Eisenman. So it will be quite interesting to watch it unfold. This is it. It was great to go back and watch Kelowna Rockets with my boy Crystal and their ultra and ultra 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 energetic commentator with some of the best homer takes in the CHL. I love it. <laughs> Again, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. See you in the next one. Peace.